ceremony today. My name is Sherlana Hill. Amen. And so at this time, amen, we're going to bring Mother Maddox for our prayer. Amen. For the prayer. Amen. Everybody, please, please let's rise for the prayer. Father God, we come before you this today, God. We come to praise you, Lord, to bless you, to hallelujah, to magnify you, Lord God. We came, God, today to lift you up, hallelujah, in the name of Jesus, Lord. We just want to praise you and thank you, God. We thank you for all that you've done. We thank that you all that you're going to do, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for your healing, hallelujah. We thank you, oh God, hallelujah, for everything that you do. We thank you for going to the cross, God, in the name of Jesus. Lord, as for me, I just thank you, God, that you give up my body, hallelujah. I just thank you, God, hallelujah, that you didn't let me give up, that you held on, that made me held, hold on, God, in the name of Jesus, holding on to your hand, God. Lord, I just want to place open door before your feet, God, in the name of Jesus, asking you, oh Lord, to bless your people. Bless your people everywhere, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. God, I ask you to encourage Open Door, God. I ask you to heal them. I ask you to give them all that they need, hallelujah, to be who you want them to be, God, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, Lord God, and in doing all of that, Father God, I just ask that anything that either of us has said, done, or even thought, anything, God, that was not like you, I ask God that you forgive us. And you take it out, hallelujah, that we won't do it no more, God, in the name of Jesus, Lord. And we praise you on today. We love you on today. We lift you up on today. We magnify you on today. We extol you today, God, in the name of Jesus, Lord. For you are good, and you are God, and you are God all by yourself. And we just praise you for that. We thank you for that, Lord God, hallelujah. Not just so much for what you do for us, Lord God, but for who you are. Hallelujah, what you mean to us, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. And we praise you today, we lift you up, and we do magnify you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Our scripture reading is coming from Mission, oh, I'm sorry, Mother, no, it is Missionary, Missionary Smith, amen. amen. I'm so sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> praise the Lord. I will, read, I will be reading Matthews 5, verses 17 and 18. Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law, till all be fulfilled. God add a blessing to the reading and hearing of his word. Amen. We came to lift up the name of Jesus. He deserves all the praise, all the glory, all the honor. Hallelujah. I will lift up your name higher. And we come to lift up Jesus. The Bible says, oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. Amen. So we want to exalt him together today.
Acknowledgement of Love and Care Committee by Missionary Smith. Amen. Amen, Missionary. Amen, Missionary. <laughs> Praise the Lord. One more time. At this time, I just want to acknowledge the Love and Care Committee. Uh, so often you don't see the people who's working behind the scenes. I'm the president. And those things that you get sometimes, like get well cards, um, when there's uh, death in the family, uh, tokens, food, is done by the Love and Care Committee. And so often, like I said, you don't see the faces. But tonight, to this morning, I want to acknowledge those. So as I call your name, I think three of them are missing today. But as I call your name, would you please stand? Vanessa Anderson. Katrina, hold y'all clap. Katrina Evans. Latoya Dorsey, she's out. Tanisha Henderson, is she here? Okay. Elkie Hill is not here. Alicia McLaughlin. Rochelle Leach, Fida Steele, and Swanzetta Weeks. She's not here. Would y'all please get them a round of applause? And I want to say for these ladies, I appreciate you because without you, there would be no love and care committee. Another thing that they do, everything that they do, it's not, no, they donate it out their pocket. And so we've been going on for some years now, I think. Sharon, she was on the committee with us. Joyner, she was on the committee with us. Pandora was on the committee with us. But everything that they do, they do it from their heart. And this is what we're supposed to do, love one another. Don't look for anything back, because can't nobody pay you no greater than God. So I'm thanking you, Love and Commit Care Committee. I'm thanking you from the bottom of your heart. I'm thanking you for all that you do. I'm thanking you that when I call on you, whenever I call on you, you never turn me down, but you're always there to lend a helping hand, to give money without your pocket. And I know sometimes I call late, but you're still willing. So I praise God for you. And I praise God and pour blessings upon each and every one of you. God bless you. Man, come on, Vacation Bible School. Amen. Come on, come on, clap your hands for the children. Thank you. 
to stand. Amen. We ask our deacons to come. Amen. Deacons, Deacon Page, Deacons, can you come? We need a couple of our young people, children. We want the change gang to come. So get the basket for our children. We want you all to please help our children. Amen. Come on, we got another little, come on up here, baby. 
Come here and hold the basket. You hold the basket on one side, hold on the other side. Amen. God bless. Elder Reed, can you come and bless the offering, please? Thank you. Amen. Everybody standing, dear God, we thank you for this time of giving and sharing, Lord. We thank you for every foot that's going to trout the aisle, Lord. We ask, Lord, that you would just bless it. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Thank God. Amen. 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 We're going to start from the rear, ask you to come. Those that have, even in your purse, if you've got loose change in your purse every Sunday. Please come up, you all. Let's, let's encourage her. Amen. Let's give her a really good God bless you. Okay. Amen. And while she's coming, our subject is, are you moved by the Holy Spirit or are you moved by your flesh? That's coming from Romans, the eighth chapter, the first through the tenth verse. Amen. Let's receive her at this time. Um, okay, I get a little nervous speaking in front of a people. So Lord, just bless me. Let the words of my mouth be acceptable unto you. So since the scripture has not been read, I'll read it. Um, there is therefore now no, condemn, no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin, for sin condemned sin in the flesh that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the Christ. For they that are after the flesh do, do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because, of the, because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So then, they that are in the flesh cannot please God, but ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so, be that the spirit of God dwell in you. Now, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. And, um... So I focused on the sixth scripture, on the sixth verse. Thank you. So I focused on the sixth verse, and our, um, the topic is, are you moved by the flesh, or are you moved by the Holy Spirit? And the sixth verse says, for to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. So the word carnal is most often used when being referred to sexual needs or desires. But in the Bible, carnal refers to all fleshly, humanly, and worldly needs, things that are not like Christ. And in the Bible, throughout the Bible, um, there's several scriptures that, you know, urges us to abstain or to avoid worldly temptations. Like 1 Peter 2 and 11 that says, Dearly beloved, I beseech you, as the strangers and pilgrims, abstain from, from fleshly lusts which war against the soul. And Peter is addressing this and prophesizing to God's chosen people who are living amongst the Gentiles to put away worldly and fleshly things, but um, not only because it corrupts your soul, but it prohibits you from being able to be a witness and draw more souls to Christ, which as Christians is our duty and obligation. So, Because in the uh, 12th uh, scripture of this um, book, it says, having your conversation honest, amongst the Gentiles, that whereas they speak against you as evildoers, they may, be, they may by your good works, which they shall behold, glorify God in the day of the visitation. So that leads me back to verse 6, where it says, For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. We should not only be honest in spiritual conversation, or when we're trying to be seen as Christian, but it should also be a part of our mind and everyday life. Um, we have to be careful of the things that we allow into our minds. So the things that we read, the things we watch, the people that we're around, the music that we listen to. Because, um, so we, um, we just can't just abstain from the carnal things and just physical and body, but also in mind and spirit so that we may live. 
So allow the Holy Spirit to guide you, to comfort and keep you. For Isaiah 26 and 3 says, Thou will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on him. Pray my <laughs> strength in the Lord. Thank you. Let's give Sister uh, L'Oreal another hand. Amen. Amen. And at this time, we're going to bring up our second speaker. And you all, let's encourage our second speaker, Sister Carmen Reed. Amen. 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 Go forth, woman of God. Praise God. Praise God. Um, I give honor to God who's ahead of my life. I give honor to um, my pastor and all of these men of God and all of these women of God. And I'm going to get right into it. So our scripture reading is from Romans 8, 1 through 10. Sister Lori Hill uh, read some of it, I'm not going to read um, too much more of it, but uh, our subject, are you moved by the Holy Spirit or are you moved by the flesh? In order for us to get a good understanding of where we are in Romans 8, we really need to understand where we've been. So I'll take you back a few chapters to Romans 6. The Apostle Paul speaks to the Christian church at Rome. There he speaks to the church metaphorically regarding sin. He uses slavery and freedom to describe sin. Either you are a slave to sin or you have freedom from sin. Sin is not just something that we do. It is a power that works against us. It enslaves us. It's a power we desperately need to be freed from. When we die in Christ, we are liberated from this evil enslavement. We do not go on serving sin. We live in a new life. We live a new life and we live in a new way. Romans 6 and 6 says, knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. Ask yourself, am I free? Or am I a slave? Moving on to chapter 7, the Apostle Paul is speaking to the church regarding the law. He goes on to explain to them that when we are born again in Christ Jesus, we die to the law and we die to sin. The law can no longer prosecute us because in the, lies, in the, in the eyes of the law, we are dead. The law was good in at in that, that it exposed our sin, but it could not help us up out of our sin. The law couldn't justify or sanctify us. He goes on to explain that no good thing dwells in our flesh. He talks about how when he want to do good and shun evil, he ends up doing evil anyway. Anybody? Anybody? He talks about the flesh and the, the, the mind warring against each other and the flesh being brought into captivity of sin. He says in Romans 7, 24, O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of death, which is sin? When he goes on, then he goes on to say, say in chapter, uh, in, in chapter 8, verse 20, chapter 7, I'm sorry, verse 25, I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then with the mind, I myself serve the law of God. But with the flesh, the law of sin. We got to have a mind to serve God. We got to have a mind to walk in the spirit. So now, so now that we are um, 
caught up on what happened a few chapters back, we find ourselves right here in Romans chapter 8, where the Apostle Paul is urging the Romans not to live according to the flesh. He encouraged them to live by the Spirit. Romans 8 and 1, Therefore, there is therefore no condemnation to them which is in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. If you, according to Romans 10 and 9, have confessed with your mouth and you believed in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, you are saved. What, am I, what are you saying, Sister Reed? Good question. According to John 6, 44, the Spirit, it, the Bible says that this, it is the Spirit of God that has drawn us to salvation. That the same Spirit has saved us from sin and eternal damnation. We no longer are slaves to sin because the Spirit of Christ lives within us. The Spirit, the spirit given to us by God is that same Spirit that raised Christ from the dead. God is not a spirit of slavery. We are joint heirs in Christ. Jesus said, free, Jesus set us free from the law and the sin of death. Now, I'm, I'm sure my time is up, so I'm going to cut a couple things out. But I'm going to take you to Galatians 5 and 18. This I say, then walk in the spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the spirit. For the flesh lusted against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to one another, so that ye cannot do the things that ye would. But if, you, if, but if ye be led by the spirit, I'm going to say that one, time, one more time. But if ye be led by the spirit, you are not under the law. And I'm going to just leave you with the question. That, uh, that we were given for the subject. <laughs> are you moved by your spirit or are you moved by your flesh? Amen, Sister Reed. Amen. Amen. That was beautiful. Every round is going higher and higher. Amen. Amen. And so at this time, at this time, we're going to bring, we have a treat for you. Amen. We're going to bring our sermonic soloist, Sister Amy Shaw. And amen. Come on, y'all. Amen, Sister Amy. Amen. She's going to bless us. And following her, we're going to receive First Lady, okay? Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. I said praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. Anyhow, never let your troubles or your burdens get you down. Amen. I thank God how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. And where there's unity, there is strength. How many of y'all looking for strength on this week? We don't know what this week is going to bring, but God, we trust you on this week. We believe in you and we have our faith and our hope. We live, move, and breathe in you. Hello, hello. Anybody here on this morning? Hallelujah. I'm going to sing a song right quick. Get out your way. Um, it's a song that we all know. Uh, first, I'm sorry. Forgive me. To the pastor of this house. To the pastor of this house. Amen. To the pastor of this house. Y'all should stand on your feet and give reverence to the man of God. He is truly a man of God. Amen. And we honor you on this morning, two lady. Evans, we honor you on this morning. Thank you for allowing me to sing amongst the people of God. I take it not uh, for lightly or lightly or for granted, but God has been good to me. He has delivered me. He has saved me. He has kept me. God is good all the time. God is good. I said God is good and all the time. Amen. Come on. Hallelujah.
there. Don't move. How I'd love to sing your praises. I'm so glad. I'm so glad you're in my life. I'm so glad you came to save us. speaker for this evening. Evangelist Mildred Middleton is a member of Open Door, a beautiful woman on the Lord, amen, and she is faithful to this ministry, and many of us have saw how God has raised her up. How many of you all know? God has healed this woman. He has healed her, and we watched it happen as she would come in with her walker. So many people said, I'm not going to church with no walker. I'm not going to church with no stick. I'm not going to church with my arm and no sling, but how, they told me that this was a saint's hospital. That's what I was taught. If y'all have to roll me in here in a bed from the hospital, just get me to the house of the Lord. I believe I'll be all right once I get here, amen? Amen, hallelujah. But God has raised her up and we're gonna hear from her today. But we wanna read the scripture before she comes. Romans 8, one through 10. And as she's making her way over, amen. There is therefore now, if you all would stand for just one minute for the word of God, there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. 
for the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, God sent in his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin, condemned sin in the flesh, that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For they that are after the Spirit do mind the things of the Spirit, but they that are after the Spirit I'm sorry, that are after the flesh, I'm sorry. But they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. But ye are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit, if so be that the Spirit of God dwell in you. Now if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the Spirit is life because of righteousness. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word. We thank God, so missionary Vivian Smith, for this beautiful subject. Are you controlled by your flesh or by the Spirit? Amen. Let's say amen to Evangelist Middle, Mildred Middleton. Come on, y'all. Give her a hand. Give her a hand. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. For the Lord is good, and his mercy endures forever. I thank God for this day. Thank the Lord for being here. Amen. I just thank God. And I love the Lord. As the sister sung this song, I love the Lord. I truly love the Lord. The Lord has done and is doing great things for me. I thank my pastor, my first lady, all the uh, mothers, the missionaries, and to the whole house, we standing in the presence of a rich God who is worthy to be praised. From the early rising of the sun to the going down of the same, he is worthy. Amen. We, we do have a good scripture here that the Lord gave us through uh, missionary Vivian Smith. Amen. Glory to God. And you know, this is a, this word here is still going on in our time. It was going on in the biblical time, and Paul got a hold to it, and he couldn't hardly wait to go to Rome, because he said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of God, because it is the power of salvation unto anyone. That believe. It don't have nothing to do with your nationality, your color, your size, your height, your weight, but to anyone that can believe. Amen. Amen. And it's because our scripture, it, it's been read already. But just to say it again, are you moved by the Holy Spirit, or are you moved by the flesh? Now, ain't no need none of us act like we have not been moved by the flesh, because in Sunday school this morning, uh, Elder Brown and then our pastor wrapped it up that Adam brought sin in, and he was of the flesh, but God sent Jesus, who is a quickening spirit. 
that we might be able to get back to God through Jesus. This is why we have to believe in the only begotten Son of God. Amen. And then uh, Paul, he did get to Rome. And we read the scripture from, in the 8th chapter, from the 1st to the 10th. Amen. But I found that this 5th verse sits in the middle of halfway of these 10 verses. And it says, those who live according to the flesh have their minds set on what the flesh desires. But those who live in accordance with the Spirit have their minds set on what the Spirit desires. Amen. Amen. And so, we do things, I, I'm a, you, you know, this, this, this text here is also talking about the law. Now, Moses uh, gave the law. He really wrote it in words, but we could not, or the people could not keep the law on, in themselves. They could not. And this is why the Lord sent us his son who was born of a virgin and the Holy Ghost impregnated Mary with Jesus. There was nothing to do with a man having to do with birthing Jesus. So he was holy, pure, and clean. And then he went, he died as a sin substitute for us before many of us, we weren't even born. Because this was over 2,000 years ago. But he paid the penalty for sin, which is death. He paid it way back then so that through him, we can be free. So that when we are born, even though the law was put and we cannot, man cannot hold the law or obey it on his own. And if you look at the, if you read in your spare time, the seventh chapter of this same uh, book will tell you that you can't. And when you eat, when you want to do good, Evil was always present. And it's just like that now today. That's why we in such a turmoil, a problem, or however you want to say it, that the world is in today. Still trying to control. And ain't got no power. And nobody got the power but Jesus. The Father said, I give all power. Is in my name. That's right, First Lady. Amen. Glory to God. And so, when we do things according to the law, we are sinning. We sin. But we need to do things of the Spirit. That was one, uh, just about everybody probably heard this particular part in the Bible where all the, the people was bringing the adulterous woman to Christ. And they all brought her there, took her there before Christ. And the scripture said that he stooped down, he wrote something, but that hasn't been recorded what he wrote. But he did say, if any of you, if any of you are without sin, let him cast the first stone. Well, about time Jesus looked up, wasn't nobody standing there but the adulterous woman. Because, see, everybody had some kind of sin. 
might not have been the same, but you had a sin, some kind. And, we, and you know, we have to be careful with that today because we have gotten or uh, grown a little bit or something through experiences, and we sometimes we act like we never went through nothing or we never had to call on God. We didn't just grow up and get all right. We had problems in our lives, in our intimate experiences, thinking that we knew everything and could nobody tell us nothing. It went in one ear and out the other. Maybe the only difference in, in that time and this time is that we dare not frown or make a face or say anything back because we knew where we would wind up. Now, the children or young people nowadays, well, they don't care. They look back at you as hard as you look at them. And we'll talk back to you. And, and, and we, we love our children, but one thing about it, love ain't got nothing to do with sin and death. Because the spirit world, demons, they don't care who they get in and who they use, especially if you are doing a good job for the Lord. Getting the youngest child to say something or do something ugly. We just can't say, that's my little baby. No, we need to stand up and tell them what the word of God says. Because see, if anyone mess around and sin till you die and give up the ghost, it's only one or two places you can go, and that's hell or heaven. Now, Jesus is in heaven, and, and he already died for us, those who believe. And you got to believe by faith. Romans 10 and 17 tells us, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Faith can't come no other way. It comes by you believing in the word of God. And, you know, it, it, it takes faith to bring us into salvation and spirituality, into Christ. It's going to take faith when we die. Even at our grave site, the enemy, at your deathbed, he still will be there trying to steal your soul. So we need faith from the beginning all the way to the end. And that's why I think sometimes at home goings, you know, some home goings you go to, you look like the person just laying there taking a nap. And it could be that, that I'm not, because I can't, but it could be that that person is peaceful because they saw the Lord when they closed their eyes and went with him. That could be, but then there are other homegoings when you see people, they be in a big, I got to say it like this, they be messed up. Look like they fighting. And they probably were fighting with that spirit of sin and death. But God gives us a choice. He's just that good. We can choose our master. Who, and the Bible says, who, the one that you feed the most is the one you're going to serve. If you keep on feeding the flesh and giving him everything he wants, that's who's going to get the increase. He's going to be your master. And you will not be able to say no. You will obey because you don't have no power. We don't have no power of our own, but if you feed and eat off the spirit, that you got to get into the word, you got to pray, you got to talk, commune, you got to get intimate with God, knowing that he is the one that loves us and that he gave Jesus for us. He loved us just that much. 
and then turned around and allowed us to choose. We look like we are already belong to him, right? But he still allowed us to be able to choose who you want to serve. So, you know, that's why there's go, not going to be no excuse for nobody at the end. Because you, you can't say, my mama made me choose him, my brother did, my sister, my aunt. No, whatever you do is what you're going to get. You can't blame nobody. That's why the Bible is written for everyone. And you know, the Bible is the word. And God is the word. And so written in written form, we can see what God is telling us from way back in the biblical time up to now. Because he is a God that changes not. He is the same God. He don't change. But he is letting us know. We can read that over in St. John 1, 1 about God is the word. He's written on the pages of life. And we read it, and most something I know before I got saved, I was given a Bible. A young lady told me, she said, we work together. She said, you're going to need this. And I looked at her like she was crazy. A book, I'm going to need this. Because I was ignorant of the spiritual things. But as I began to just grow on, found out she was right. I really, really need it. I used to put it on my whatnot shelf, dust it off, I dusted other things off on that shelf. But there came a time in my life I had to take it off the shelf, dust and all, and open it up and began to read what thus said the Lord. And every born again believer needs to read the Gospels. We need to start at Matthew. Read all the Gospels, beginnings in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and then you can go to Acts. But you need to read about the foundation of who it is that you, could, you believe and what he did when he was on earth, his life, and we got to know it's just knowledge, spiritual knowledge, that we as believers need to know. Our, uh, the scripture that was read from Matthew 5 and 17. Jesus said, I didn't come to take away the law, but I came to fulfill it. Fulfill the law, make it better, in other words. See, we can go through him as our lawyer. And the Father, and, can, and he can go to the Father for us and talk to the Father. He can plead our case. Which is one reason why many of us are still here today. Jesus was pleading our case. Amen. When we thought we were who we were and we were not, nothing. And could not do nothing. But we have on this yellow today as light, sunshine. But there's no shine if it's not the shine of Jesus. And he lived in us. And he radiates through us. And that's why everywhere we go, we, we ought to lift up Jesus. You don't have to be told no Bible. You become the Bible. They look at you as the apostle or the disciple because nowhere in here you see he said, come on, I'll make you Christians. He said, when he got all his disciples, he said, come follow me. And see, we, want, we don't want to follow Christ because the road is narrow. You can't do what the Joneses do. You got to do what Jesus did. And he is our supreme example. He gave us an example. Went all the way to Calvary. Died for us. And by our sins. But I tell you, there is nobody like Jesus. Nobody. And everything that God says that he does, in this written word here, he does. 
And he said his word will not return to him void. If you can believe it by faith and act on it, say what God says right here in the Bible. I, I, first lady said a little here about me, and I, I'm not going to be too much longer, but I'm a living witness of what God can do if you can believe by faith. I remember I had, there was a stroke. I had a stroke, and uh, like first lady said, and then I couldn't, I walked, but it was like in a bit posture. And, but God, I don't care. I kept coming. It didn't matter. I told someone I was talking to not long ago, if I had to crawl to get to the house of the Lord, I would get there. But I know I won't have to do that because God will send one of his other workers to get me and bring me here. But I did. I had a stroke. And then they told me just last year, in October, that there was cancer. And I said, I ain't got no cancer. I, I rebuke that in Jesus' name. And I kept on. There were some healing scriptures God gave me. I began to read them like medicine. I took it morning and night for a month. And that was in October, September, I'm sorry, of last year. And when I went back in October, and they checked and everything, they said, well, Miss Middleton, we don't see anything. And I just said, thank you, Lord, because God removed it. He healed my body. Amen. And let me tell you, I still will and still do press my way to the house of the Lord because healing, faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. And we have a word teaching pastor. Amen. I've been to a couple of churches, so I know the difference. Amen. This is the longest one beside the one I was in when I was a little girl that I have been in this long. I think it's been about 23 years I've been a member of the Open Door Church. It was only because of the Word of God was being taught. Amen. Amen. And I just thank God. And, and then the last strike, I tell you, when you go to do good, the enemy is always right there. He always present. And the last one, I had, they called it cataract surgery. And, but they got one, one uh, eye too late, they said. But with God, they weren't too late because I know God was right there. And he still was working it out. And he did work it out. But they wrote it down as that one eye that they was laid on was a blind eye. And I said, uh-uh. Y'all know say it's blind, but the spiritual know say not so. And I kept on and I'm still believing God. I will believe him because he is my only hope. He is the only power that I know will fight and keep me and keep my mind in perfect peace. And I thank God for that. I thank the Lord for that. He is our God. He's a mighty God. I don't know what other kind of roadblock the enemy made throw in there, but one thing about God, he goes ahead. He's a beginning God, and he is a ending God. He knows the end before we even get there. So he knows what kind of strategies and loopholes that the enemy is going to throw at us. That's why we just need to believe him by faith. No matter what happens, don't, do not give in. Just keep on reading, keep on praising, 
and keep on glorifying him. He will not leave you alone. And I am a witness. And I have seen many people that came to this church that got healed in many different ways. And it's because of the word of God. And God is the word. You need to believe on him as the scriptures has said. And you will be kept. If you believe sin, you practice sin. See, that's one thing we be talking about. We don't know what we're doing. Yes, we do. When we practice, you know what you're doing if you're practicing it. You know, we want to drink. Some of us want to smoke, play cards. Some of us, we just having fun. Okay, you go fun on into death and wind up in hell having fun. See, we know what we are doing. We just don't want to give up because we want to be in authority. We cannot be in authority. As one power, and that is Jesus. He is the only power that we have. He is the only one that can keep us. He can. He can keep us from falling. I'm standing here. Now, I walked in with a cane. There's a little cane over there. But that's all right. There was a time when the bottom of my foot wouldn't pick up and put down. But it will do that now with an assistance of cane. But God, the power, is the one that's really doing it. Without him, we can do nothing. And without him, we will fail. I choose Jesus today. You should choose the Holy Spirit and live, because we have life in Christ. The enemy don't want to know that we already got life in Christ. When we put him down and we pick up Jesus, the word of God, and begin to count and believe God, then he is the master. Sin no longer can rule over, that's right, Oh, everybody know First Lady, she'll preach with you too now. She ain't short now. She will preach. She'll be over there doing something all around this church, but she'll preach right with you or deliver the word right with you. And But I just thank God for this opportunity to minister the word. There's so much, and I know I don't have enough time to say everything that I really, really, really could say, and it would be the God honest truth according to the scripture, but I'm going to yield right now. And I thank God for this day. And I thank God for all of you. And one more thing, check those desires. What kind of desire are you having? Is it of the flesh or is it of the spirit? And if it's of the flesh, you need to get rid of it and start desiring the things of the spirit, desire those. Because it's a war that goes on within us all the time, flesh and spirit. But spirit is going to win because he already won. That's why I'm here. That's why you all are here. He already won over death. And God is good. I just want you to know God is good. And I truly love the Lord because he's really done so much for me. Amen. Come on, y'all. Give her a hand. Come on. Come on. Amen. God bless you, Evangelist. Bless you. Our pastor is coming just for a few minutes, and then we will be dismissing. Praise God. If you were listening to that word, it was a, it is a beautiful topic, beautiful topic today. And that's a, it's a question that all of us need to answer. Are you moved by the Holy Spirit or are you moved by your flesh? Uh, one of the things that we need to know is that what we're looking for, what we need, is an assurance on the inside 
that God is with us. Amen. We're looking for that. Many of us will try to act like we don't need it, but you need to know it. You need to be secure and confident that God is with you. And another thing you don't understand is that because God's moral law is written on your heart, according to Romans 2 and 15, it said because the, the, the moral law is written on your heart, your conscience either accuses you or excuses you. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying? Be Let me say it again. Because the moral law of God is written on all men's hearts. The moral law. Either your conscience will excuse you or it will accuse you. When your spirit man knows that you are wrong, your conscience accuses you. When your spirit man knows that you have done the right thing or made the right choice, then your conscience will excuse you. Come on. And what many of us will do is we'll try to ignore the conscience that's telling us you have done the wrong thing. And then when you ignore it, you go further into feeling condemned. But all God wants is for you to give vent to the spirit, to his spirit that tells you you did the wrong thing. Now repent and turn to God. He will forgive you. What he's trying to do is clear your conscience. Come on, hallelujah. Somebody look at Hebrews 10 real quick. We're going to receive uh, an offering for our speaker. Amen. But I, I just want to kind of help in the word. Look at Hebrews 10 and, so, and begin reading verse 1. And that's why the scripture talked about in Romans, there's therefore now no condemnation for them that are in Christ Jesus. Because listen, the only way to clear your conscience is to be in Christ Jesus. Do y'all hear what I'm saying? Well, I hope you hear what I'm saying to you. Your conscience, Jalicia, it's always looking for something to give it confidence that sin has been taken away. Your conscience is always looking for it. Amen. When you feel condemned, it is not God condemning you. It's your own heart because you know you have done wrong. Come on. That's why the scripture said, there's therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. God never condemns you. The Holy Ghost convicts you, but he never condemns you. When you feel condemned, it's because you know you are wrong. Come on, somebody. And all God is trying to get you to do at that moment is turn to him and say, Lord, forgive me for what I have done. I recognize that it's wrong. I won't do it again. Come on. And when he does that, when he does that, he did that so he could clear your conscience. Now read Hebrews 10 and 1. For, for the law, having a shadow of the good things to come. Come on. And not the very image of the thing. Come on. Can never with those sacrifices which they offer year by year, continually make the comers thereunto perfect. I want you to get this. What it's saying is, back under the law, which God gave, God gave the way under the law to cover sin, not take it away, but to cover it up. And so he gave them all those sacrifices that were supposed to be made according to the sin that was done. They would bring their sacrifice to the priest. The priest would offer the sacrifice and take the blood and cover the altar with it. It was signifying the covering of sin, not taking it away. Because that's why Hebrew said, for the law having a shadow of the good things to come and not the very image of the things 
could never make the comers thereunto perfect. Why? Because it couldn't take away the sin. It could only cover it. But watch this. It had, a, it had an effect, an opposite effect. Read. Come on. For then the world... For then would they not have ceased to be offered. Yeah. If they could have taken away sin, then those sacrifices would still have been offered today. But they couldn't take away sin. And what actually happened was, because that the worshipers once purged should have had no more conscience of sins. In other words, if those sacrifices were efficacious, efficacious means effective or sufficient, then once those sacrifices were offered, there would have been no more need for any more offerings because the sin would have been taken away and their conscience would have been cleared. But watch what the scripture said. But in those sacrifices, there is a remembrance again made of sins every year. So that means the sin, the sacrifices they offered for last year when they offered the sacrifices again in 2022 the, the sacrifices in 2022 actually reminded them of the sins that they committed in 2021 come on and what you don't recognize is your heart and your spirit is looking for the clearing of your conscience when you feel unsettled in your spirit and you haven't even done nothing, it's because your heart needs the confidence that your conscience is clear with God. Are y'all hear what I'm saying to you? You'll be wondering, nothing even happened. Why do I feel so? Anybody know what I'm talking about? Why do I feel so? afraid? Why do I feel so worried? Why do I feel like trouble is looming around me? It's because your spirit man needs confidence that your conscience is clear with God. And the only way to clear your conscience is through Jesus Christ. Jesus is the sacrifice made for one time to clear the conscience of all men. Your conscience will never be clear until you know Christ as your Savior. Watch this. I'm, let me prove it to you. Come on, deacons, while I'm doing this. I want to I bless you in the Word. I want to bless you in the Word. Come on. Yes. Missionaries are coming. All right, they're coming. Okay, watch this. Look at Hebrews 2 and 15. Hebrews 2 and 15. And deliver them who through the fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. Hear that? And deliver them who through the fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. Fear holds you in bondage. I said fear holds you in bondage. And I'm going to tell you what, everybody is concerned about dying unless you're crazy. You hear me? Everybody is concerned about dying. I don't know what it is to die. I know what it is to live. I don't know what it is to die. Come on, y'all. Sister Carmen, you hear what I'm saying? But when you trust the Lord, the Lord will show you in this life how you can depend on him to do what he said and to help you through every trial you face. Come on. If you will walk with the Lord, you will gain so much experience with God that you become more and more confident in what God promised you. And even when it comes to the unknown, God, I know this, I'm going to hold on to your hand. 
because you're going to stay with me. You're going to strengthen me. You're going to help me. You're going to hold me up. I'm going to make it. I'm going to be all right. The devil is a liar. You are my strength. You are my way maker. You are my help. Hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. Look at somebody and tell them the only reason I made it this far is God is on my side. That's right. That's right. Don't think he brought you this far to leave you now. Come on. Look at somebody tell them, say, don't think God brought you this far to leave you now. Hallelujah. He know you're trusting in him. Come on. He know you're depending on him. He know you're hoping in him. And he won't let you down. He won't let you down. Hallelujah. God bless you. Come on. We're coming. Amen. Come on, thank God for Sister Carmen Reed. Thank God for Sister L'Oreal Burnett. Thank God, amen, for Evangelist Mildred Middleton.